what is it about? It started out from 1931 to 1949. I wanted, that was all it was ever going to be. I wanted to encapsulate the very rich uh, life my mother's and father's family led in Poland before the war, that it, it, culturally, and, and, and it, it was a good life. It, you know, my mother spoke of it with great fondness. And um, so I wanted to, and of course, my father died during the show aside, you know, but I understand he also. So I wanted to encapsulate that. So there were those eight years before the show that I spoke of both our families and, and how they lived their lives and what they had done. And it, it, it was a happy thing for me to write about, if I can put it so tritely. And then there was the horror of the Shoah. I could not not include that. So there was that. And then there was the post-war and the coming to Australia. And when uh, that, that was it. That was all I wanted to write about. This was the new beginning. And I showed it to someone, an independent ed editor, actually, who said, oh, that's a nice story. Where is it heading? She said, you're not in it at all. And I said, well, no, it's not meant to be an autobiography or a memoir. It's actually meant to encapsulate before, during, and the immediate after, including the creation of the State of Israel. To me, that was a complete book. And she said, no, it's got nothing of you in it at all. You know, it needs to continue from 1949. You can't finish it in 1949 when you arrived in Australia. And I was very reluctant um, because, as I said, I had not set out to write an autobiography. And then uh, I looked at it and I thought, well, everything I've done since 1949, whether consciously or more likely unconsciously in most cases, has been influenced by the Shoah. Everything I've done, it's part of my being down to my fingertips. And very often that was unconscious. Um, things like becoming involved in communal life. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I was a lawyer. I had three children. I was very happy. I wasn't seeking public life, to, to use that phrase loosely. I, I wasn't. And then I was asked to take over Jewish Community Council Victoria and ultimately Executive Council of Australian Jewry. I was on the uh, Claims Conference Board for 10 years. I was on the Memorial Foundation Board for many years. These were not what I was looking for. I was happy with my children and my grandchildren and my garden and the dog and walking on the beach. These were not things that I was looking for. But it became clear that there was a demographic that was missing. And that was the demographic of my age group. We had been decimated. Well, no, when I say we had been decimated, we had been a lot more than decimated. You know, 100,000 survived and one and a half million children were killed. So there was this hole. And it's a little bit pretentious to talk about moral responsibility, but without having analyzed it as such, that was what I felt. And it was in writing the book that I realized that that is what, what I had felt. And so I became, became involved in communal life. It was always an adjunct to my life. I've never let it be my life or rule my life. It was always a position I held. It wasn't who I was. It was a need to contextualize things. Uh, there was the very rich pre-war Jewish life in Poland that my mother spoke of with such enormous fondness. Then we had the horror of the Shoah, and then we had the triumph of survival. And I don't think you can take any of them out of context. They all play into each other and they're all very, very important. To look at Poland through the prism of the Shoah only, although what's happening in Poland now, perhaps it's not so unfair, but generally what one would think it was unfair. To look at the enormously wonderful life my mother had in Poland before the war is also not Poland because that was gone. And the triumph of survival is wonderful. But this is what nourishes us and feeds us as individuals and as a nation. But again, it, was, it came out of things. It, it, it had a historical context. And that was what I wanted to do, partly. There was also this feeling 
We are alive as long as there is someone in the world who remembers us. If there's just one person in the world who remembers us, we continue to live. And I didn't want that to finish when I died or my children died. And I didn't want it to finish, not just on the micro level for my family and, and, and the people I knew, that was important to me clearly, but I also wanted it on the macro level for those people who, who there was no one to speak for. And for those of you who've read my book, there is a scene that my mother told me about, which is haunted her and has haunted me when we were hiding in the rubble during one of the actions in the ghetto, in the Lvov ghetto, uh, she heard a young boy voice, a young boy's voice saying, Proszę pan, ja tak chcę żyć. please, sir, I so much want to live. And that was immediately followed by a shot. Uh, I can't get that out of my mind. My mother could never get that out of my mind, amongst the other things she couldn't. That boy has to have a voice. Someone somewhere has to read that and think of that boy, even if we don't know his name. So there was that sort of context as well. You know, he wanted to live, I want him to live. It's helped me to put things into perspective. Uh, I, I'm not just talking about the contextualizing of the subject matter, which I spoke about before. It helped me put my life into perspective because there were things that I had not previously analyzed. Uh, there were choices I had made. Uh, there was the way I interacted with my children, which by the way, was totally less fair. Uh, and uh, also the rationale for my communal involvement. I'd never put those things together. And I didn't realize, because I'm a child survivor, because I was born in 1939, I didn't realize to what extent the Shoah influenced many, if not most, of those decisions. And, and going through the writing process made me analyze things. You know, why were you so less affair with your children? Well, I was because I didn't have a normal childhood and I relived it with my children. So if they didn't want to go to school, that's fine. We'd go to the beach instead. And, and I don't think they suffered by it. There were certain guidelines and rules that were intractable, but other things were a little bit, you know, and it was because I'd never had that sort of relaxed, easy childhood. My, uh, my memories are my mother's memories because I was a, an infant and a child. And I always took everything she said as gospel. But when I started writing, I did research. I wanted to know what day Petura day was and whether it accorded with what my mother said. I wanted to know what day we went into the ghetto and whether it accorded with her talking about the seas. And that proved so beneficial because she was so accurate. Her memory was unbelievable. And, and in fact, I, I've had correspondence with someone who put Petura Day at a different day. And I said, go and check it because I think my mother was right. And she was, you know, so the, that, that was an interesting aspect because I'm not, um, I'm not a researcher. I'm not a historian. I'm a fly by the seat of your pants sort of person. So that, that was interesting. I'm not hopeful of there ever being an answer. And <laughs> there are only questions and speculations. Human nature is what it is. We don't learn anything from history. We make the same horrible mistakes over and over and over again. Look at Ukraine. You know, we just do not learn. Uh, there are people who have courage and there are people who don't. And there are people who have a moral compass and there are people who don't. And we can try and try and try to change that balance. But whether we ever will achieve success on that, I, I, I don't want to be pessimistic because I'm not a pessimistic person by nature. But I think that's the realistic approach. Uh, no, they weren't heavily consulted because they all lead enormously rich and busy lives. And uh, 
having said that, they were always supportive, very supportive. Uh, my husband, in fact, read the book the day before the law, or the two days before the launch. It took him two days to read it, but he hadn't seen any of it before that. Uh, that's fine. Uh, my daughter was very involved, mainly because she has a great memory and she's very forensic in her analysis. She's got a very fine mind and she is the one who knew my mother's stories the best. So I used to run things past Sally a lot. Uh, sometimes we disagreed about what the truth was. Sometimes we didn't. Sometimes she was right. Sometimes I insisted that I was. And um, she also very kindly read every word that I wrote, you know, and, and that was and that was important to me because, um, as I said, she has a good mind, and I was grateful for that input. Uh, my sons sort of skimmed through some of it and always said, oh, that's great. Well, being told that's great is not really an effective input. You want someone to tell you, nah, that's not great. <laughs> so they were good from that point of view that they were prepared to do it. Two of my grandsons actually took an interest and, and read some passages, which I was struggling with and gave me feedback. And that was worthwhile. But I wouldn't say there was a, a, a huge uh, involvement. They, they knew I was writing it. I put it aside for a couple of years. I went back to it, you know. Uh, but but uh, Sally, my daughter Sally was very, very involved. It's freed me up to speak more openly about my show experiences to the extent that I've agreed to, to uh, speak at the uh, Holocaust Center with students, which I don't think I could have done before because it's there already. So it's nothing that there's nothing, you know, that I have to uh, be private about or hide. It, it's there, it's in the book. So it, it has given me the freedom to do that. I don't think it's given me a sense of empowerment. That has to come from within, not from writing a book or, or, or having a career. But they're, they're externals that come from already empowering yourself in other ways. So I don't think it's empowered me, but it has freed me up. 